Hello, welcome to Latino Communicators. I'm Inez Gonzalez, Director of Cal State Fullerton's Latino Communications Initiative. Joining me today is Kimberly Flores. Kimberly is a third year communications major here at Cal State Fullerton, emphasizing in broadcast journalism with a minor in political science, a very good combination. She is the first in the, her family to attend college and has been a student leader on campus since her freshman year. Last year, Kimberly was selected as the Panera Congressional Intern Scholar. This is a prestigious internship. Only one Cal State Fullerton student is selected for this opportunity once a year. For this internship, she worked in Washington, D.C. in the office of Los Angeles Congressman Tony Cárdenas. Ladies and gentlemen, this 20-year-old has a very bright future. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you so much, Inez, and thank you for that great introduction. You're welcome. Before you introduce today's guest, I want to hear more about how you won this prestigious internship. Hi, of course. Um, so it all started with a paper application. I submitted that to the office of President Mildred Garcia, where she then overviewed that, and she invited me to meet with her and her entire cabinet. They interviewed me, and about a week later, I received a phone call from her saying she was going to nominate me for this. After that, they flew me to Monterey, where I met with Mrs. Sylvia Panetta and some of her staff members at the Panetta Institute for Public Policy. I had to undergo a background check, and once that got back, they um, confirmed the nomination and let me know that I was going to be going to Washington that following August. How wonderful. It, but it sounds like an intimidating process. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are tips that you could share with the students that are interested in applying so they don't get discouraged? Right, so I think college is about stepping out of your comfort zone and always doing things that you're not normally comfortable with. That's how you're going to succeed while you're at a university and also after you graduate. And I would say go ahead and apply because my coach used to always tell me you're going to miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So if you don't apply, you'll never get it. So I would just go ahead and apply and do it anyways and see what comes out of it. That's great advice. And what coach was this? A basketball coach? Yes, basketball coach. <laughs> so you're a basketball star as well. <laughs> Used to be, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get back to our uh, guest for today. Why don't you introduce him? Okay, so today we'll be meeting with actor Enrique Castillo. My family was actually really excited for me to conduct this interview. My dad was telling me how heartbroken he was after what happened to Montana. I'm watching the movie, so don't <laughs> tell me. Don't, be, don't do a spoiler. Okay, I won't do a spoiler. <laughs> but back to Enrique. Um, he was born in Calexico, California. He worked as a farm worker up until high school, then attended and graduated from UC Berkeley. He's an actor, writer, director, and founding member of the Latino Theater Company in Los Angeles. He is known for his roles in Deja Vu, Blood In, Blood Out, Mi Familia, El Norte, and the very popular Showtime drama, Weeds. Enrique is currently working on taking his musical play, Veteranos, A Legacy of Valor, back on tour this year. I've been to Calexico many times. My grandmother actually lived there, and it's a border town, a small border town in Imperial County, which is, I think, one of the poorest counties in California. So I'm really interested in hearing how Enrique made it from Calexico yeah. to Hollywood. So I think, oh, it, I actually know, I know his wife as well, mm -hmm. Belle Hernandez. She's a journalist and also an actress. I think they met when they were working on the play Suit Suit. Okay. And they have a daughter, Karina, who's also an actress. So a very nice. talented family. <laughs> yeah, Let's definitely. welcome Enrique Castillo. Enrique, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. It's good to see <laughs> you. Good to see you. Hi, thank you for coming. Kimberly. <laughs> Congratulations on the internship. Thank you so much. Good achievement. Good <laughs> thank Basketball you. Basketball player. Yeah, in high school used to be. So you're the Chicana Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that one before, but I guess so. <laughs> well, let's just go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, so would you like to share with us what first inspired you to become an actor? Um, ever since I was a kid, we, our parents always used to take us to the, to the theater, to the movies. And um, being in a border town, of course, you know, you always have the advantage of on the one um, you have a block and you see movies in English at the Fox Theater and then you walk around the corner and there's the Azteca so you get to see movies in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So over here I was watching John Wayne, 
<laughs> and Montgomery Clift and Marlon Brando. And then later on, we would go over and watch uh, Antonio Aguilar and hmm. all the other Mexicano actors. Um, so that's where it started. So um, at a certain point, that stopped because we got involved in two other things. But I always admired the work that they did. Of course, you never realize that it's a it's an actual craft that you have to learn and study and and then um, become proficient at. Um, so that's where it started, and then I just continued and until um, there was a long gap, of course, from high school growing up, and then when I went to college, and when I went to college at Berkeley, um, I met Luis Valdez there. I had been taking some drama classes, did really well. Then the third world strike happened, and that's when all the third world colleges started, Chicano studies, Afro-American studies. And Luis was teaching teatro, teatro class. I didn't know what that really was at the time. So I took the class, met Luis, and then he invited me to go see uh, his company perform. And when I saw him, I said, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life, because it was very close to me. I recognized all of the characters. They spoke like me, bilingual. Uh, street slang and whatnot, and uh, quickly after that we became very good friends. He invited me to be a member of his company, and then eventually that led to you know working in Zoot Suit years later, and that's where it that's where it uh, took off from there. I read that you actually were a farm worker for a while, and then you yeah. you 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 became an actor in Hollywood. <laughs> and then I did read about Teatro Campesino, and it seemed to me that Teatro Campesino played an important role. So can you t tell us more about that experience working at Teatro Campesino? Well, I worked as a farm worker from as far back as I can remember, able to walk to my actually my sophomore year at Cal Berkeley. So I was working in mm. the produce all those years, um, and then. Uh, when Luis started the class over there, he was teaching the class, um, we actually started a teatro there called Hijos del Sol. And we did a production called the, I don't know if I could say this, but it's the ultimate pen. Um, <laughs> that was written by Isidro Macias. He was, a, he was a student at the time. It became very popular, and so we kept touring that to other campuses. And then uh, Luis invited me to attend a workshop in San Juan Bautista where he had moved the company. And I went there one summer, and as a result of what I was doing there, there, there had been a new program at the university called University Without Walls, which was actually working in your field of study as opposed to sitting in the classroom and doing it, kind of like this, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing it here. Um, and so I toured with the company, um, performed obviously and then all of that was documented I had to document everything that I did and then I got involved in music and so I learned several instruments and then eventually wrote some of the songs that we recorded on an album and I took uh, multi-track recording classes in at Zotrope Studios in San Francisco with the engineer from the Grateful Dead and all of that had to go documented into this whole presentation that you sat in front of a panel and then you presented your material and it was kind of like this or this, you know. <laughs> uh, and I was fortunate that, uh, you know, that it was accepted like that and they actually said you should have applied for a master's <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> based on the work. So uh, the work with Campesino continued. Um, you traveled the country, of course, and traveled internationally. We represented the United States in the political theater arena at the World Theater Festival in Nancy, in Paris, France, and mm -hmm. toured it around. Um, received very well. And of course, all of this was the theme of all of the productions were, of course, to bring attention to the struggle of the United Farm Workers, and Cesar Chavez and Dolores' struggle, and as well as everybody else which I was, of course, very familiar with. Mm -hmm. right. And that's where the teatro had started on the strike lines when uh, things were kind of going bad. And so Cesar went to Luis, I guess. He had taken some theater at San Jose State. And can you do something about this, you know? And so Luis started improvising with some of the other workers and they came up with these little skits and 
entertain everybody, made fun of the, uh, you know, the strike breakers, los esquiroles, and the ranchers, and the, uh, everybody else, and pretty soon the theater was born there, and it continued, and still around, it's still, still in San Juan Bautista. What a great story. Um, so you've now had the opportunity to work as an actor, a writer, and a director. Which, out of all these professions, which one do you prefer, or do you prefer one over the other? Uh, that's like asking me which one of my kids I love best. <laughs> 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 um, you know, you learn to appreciate each one and the discipline and the craft that it is and that it takes to be able to just accomplish a little bit because you're never going to stop learning. First of all, as an actor, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. And as a writer, even more so, as a director, and all of the disciplines to me have a uniqueness about them that are worthy of excellence in themselves. And it's an incredible experience to have in each one of those disciplines. For example, as, as an actor, I love the research and I, I, and I love the, the process. Mm -hmm. I don't usually see the projects that I'm in or the, the plays. I'm never going to see them anyway. But the process is why, what I love, getting to know the actors, the director, all of that dynamic that, gets, that is involved. Um, the moments that are so priceless that when you're discovering in rehearsal that an actor will go up on their lines or, and you, you're sitting there and you know the line and the actor is like you could see the, the wheels spinning trying to figure things out. Or when then there, a discovery is made, it's like, oh, wow, we could do this here. There's such a beauty in that experience. It, it's incomparable to anything else. Now, as a director, you see a different side of that. You get to orchestrate, you know, you get to pull the strings with everybody, and there's a beauty in that. You know, can I make this happen? And then, of course, as a writer, there's nothing more fulfilling than to conceptualize something and then execute it on a piece of paper, present it to somebody who's a living, breathing human being, and hear those words come out. And then, on top of that, they give you something beyond it that you never even thought about. And it's so fulfilling, it's, it gives me goosebumps, you know, just the whole, the whole experience and each one of those disciplines to me. I feel sorry that the audience doesn't get to see that. So it sounds like you've had the chance to play an array of different roles. Um, can you share with us um, what you felt was the most challenging role you've had to play? Um, actually, they're all pretty challenging um, because they're... they're as I said, with the, with the different disciplines, you know, it's, it take, you, re, you discover something new in each one that, that, that's challenging. And certainly, whether you play a small role or a large role, um, it's still the same amount of work that you have to put into it. You're, you're part of the entire collage, you know, the entire puzzle that fits together. And if your, puzzle, if your piece isn't to form, it's not going to fit. That, and that goes for, for even the... Uh, what what the public doesn't see because once you get the role of course if it makes it beyond the editing process they're gonna see you but what about the ones that they don't see you in for example I was not in I was not in Selena but I would have loved to have played the father right which Eddie got I went in audition for it well for me the process is very simple I've I've grown over the years to appreciate the entire process that it takes to live in this in this industry and that means that every time I get to do something whether it's an audition or the actual role that's my work that's the only thing that I can control is my performance and I value that and that's what speaks for me it doesn't matter whether people like the film or not whether they like the other characters or not my goal is that I'm going to execute to the highest level and my ability so that at least someone might say, he was really good. Mm -hmm. The movie was terrible, but he really did a good job. Right. And if I could do that, if I can get close to that, then, you know, I've done, I, I'm satisfied. So when I am called for an audition, for example, I will prepare to do the role. 
because that may be the only time that I ever will get to do it. That way I leave with no regrets. I don't have to, you know, be home, driving home thinking, oh my God, I should have done this, or why didn't I read it this way, or, oh, you know, I make my choices, I, I do my due diligence as if I was doing the role, I prepare for it. Yeah, there are times when you get something that, you know, they call it uh, cold reading, or, or you're a busy day one day, and then you get it late at night, and you have to prepare two, three scenes the next day. But as long as you do it to the best of your ability, you don't cut corners in your efforts, and you can walk out of that audition room and, you know, you breathe easy and you say, tear, I tear, I literally, I tear up those, they call them sides. Mm -hmm. I just tear them up and let them go because I can't live in regret. I don't think I'll ever watch a movie again without realizing that every single actor is giving it their all. I think I, you know, it's easy to not pay attention, but now after hearing you, I'm going to be more respectful of every single actor in a, in a movie. I love learning about not just actors. Um, I love learning about people. Um, which gives you a great insight into character study to begin with. But for example, even sports figures, you know, um, I enjoy watching E60 or Sports Center or Jim Lampley's, you know, uh, shows because they give you an insight into the humanity of the individual. You learn about the struggles that they've gone through, the communities and the adversity, and then to triumph. And to be on a world stage and perform at that level. And everybody thinks they just, you know, that's all they are. But they're not. They're human beings, you know, that, that have, have feelings and whatnot. And so the privilege to be able to portray someone and give them that background, it, it's, to me, it's, it's priceless. I, I, there's nothing more fulfilling to me than, than for someone to actually tell you, yeah, that's exactly how my dad was. Or that's how my, when we did Blood In, Blood Out, for example, for some of the inmates to say, dude, you know, orale. <laughs> or the warden at the time, who was the real warden in the movie, oh, wow. to say, you know, I got the word from the guys, man. Even El Mero Mero. He says, doing good. I said, okay. It's so wonderful to hear everything you have to say about your your career and that obviously you're passionate about and we're unfortunately running out of time we have so many <laughs> questions right but this has been a wonderful conversation and one of the things that we ask all our guests is to look at the camera and tell the future communicators give them an inspirational message so if you can do that now this is for you guys that are getting into entertainment and particularly I'm talking to the actors you have a choice and this this is a choice that I make it's my choice to do this. Nobody's forcing me to do it. Nobody's twisting my arm. So when I make a decision to work on a project, I know that that comes with a responsibility to do my best. And I have no regrets about that afterwards. So that I'm on the set and I am happy and I try to make it better for everybody, to appreciate everybody, because it takes an entire community to make a film happen or a television show. And if you go in there with anything other than appreciation for what you do, the alternative to being happy is you're going to be miserable. So if you make the choice to do this, do it consciously and enjoy the process. Okay? Trust me, you're going to love it. <laughs> That was such great advice, and thank you so much for accepting our invitation to come to our show. It's been so awesome being able to interview you and meet you. Well, I loved it. I appreciate the work that you do. I wish you a lot of success, thank and you. I hope to work together. Thank yes, you, course. Enrique. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed our conversation with Enrique Castillo. Until next time.
proud sponsors of Latino Communicators, Southwest Airlines. You are now free to move about the country.